Okay guys, it's another introductory video about antibiotic and in this video we'll be talking about uh, cephalosporin. So let us talk about, so let me take a color, we'll be talking about cephalosporins. Okay. Now cephalosporins are also among the uh, type of uh, cell wall inhibitors. So let me write cell wall synthesis inhibitor antibiotic. Cell wall synthesis inhibitor. Okay. Inhibitor. And there are different type or different generations of cephalosporins that are being developed. Generation 1, generation 2, 3 as well as now 4. Okay. And among all of these generations, uh, generation 3 and 4 are the most updated. And there are a few bacteria that can uh, resist this generation 3 and 4 cephalosporins. Uh, but uh, cephalosporin generation 1 and 2 are not that good or found to be less effective nowadays. Anyway, so the example of this kind of antibiotic, uh, what we can draw are Cefixim, so these are mostly mixed with uh, generation 3 and 2, Cefixim and Ceftriaxone, Ceftriaxone and we also have uh, Cefotaxim, so let me write it again, Cefotaxim, Cefotaxim. Okay. Now, among all of them, this this ceftriaxone and cefotaxime, these are found to be very much effective nowadays. Right? So they are very very effective. So usually, most of the infections which are uh, most of the infections and most of the bacteria which are resistant against uh, beta lactam antibiotics like penicillin, uh, they can be treated. Those infections can be treated using ceftriaxone or cef cefotaxime. Right? Okay. Now uh, this. Uh, kind of uh, cephalosporin antibiotic uh, they can go against a, a broad range of bacteria usually so if we look at the spectrum of them uh, there are gram positive cocci and uh, among gram positive cocci we are having very common uh, cocci like staphylococcus and streptococcus and in gram negative uh, they can also go against gram negative bacilli actually gram negative rods i must write gram negative rods not bacilli gram negative rods and they can go against gram positive coccus so gram negative rods or gram negative bacilli whatever gram negative rods uh, can be there now this gram negative rod uh, among this gram negative rod uh, most of the cases cefuroxime uh, uh, is a kind of antibiotic that can uh, cross the blood brain barrier so this is useful for meningitis. So in some extent, they can also cure gram-negative coccus infection. So let me write it here, gram-negative coccus infections. Okay, and this thing is very, very important. So I must write it here, uh, cefuroxime, cefu, so just print this name in your mind, cefuroxime is a kind of uh, cephalosporin. I don't know, I can't remember which generation it is, but cephoroxime or cephuroxime is a kind of antibiotic which can cross, so let me write, can cross blood brain barrier, blood brain barrier, right? So as it can cross blood brain barrier, uh, it can be used to treat meningitis or bacterial meningitis. Okay, so that's very, very important. Okay, and third generation has the highest activity, a third generation cephalosporins have the highest activity against the gram-negative bacteria and highest beta-lactamase resistance, right? So let me write, a third generation, so I have told you that there are several generations, four generations are there. Now among all of this generation, third generation has the highest activity. So highest activity highest activity against against gram negative is shown by third generation cephalosporin like ceftriaxone, and cefixin, uh, all, all this okay so and they are also having highest beta lactamase so that's another um, wrong thing about them okay so these are the spectrum of antibiotics so we can say uh, activity now uh, the therapeutic use uh, for them usually they are taken for the UTI infections that is urinary tract infections or you can say urethral infections so urethral infections we can take them and we can also take them for meningitis and pneumonia so meningitis because remember remember I have already talked about it 
uh, cefuroxime can be used for the treatment of meningitis so we can take them for meningitis treatment and we can use them for treatment of pneumonia and also we can use for sepsis okay majorly they are used for majorly in fact all of them most of these beta lactam antibiotics or cell wall synthesis inhibitors are used for uti infections most of them are used for UTI infections like penicillins are also used for UTI infections majorly now the cep uh, this cephalosporins are also used for uh, UTI infection and uh, they, ca they can also be used for uh, pneumonia uh, infections okay uh, pneumonia pseudopneumonia infections uh, both of them all of them infection okay now what are the side effects now side effects uh, are some of the cep uh, cep cephalosporins are toxic some of the cephalosporins not all uh, they are slightly uh, showing any kind of toxicity and among among as we are going towards uh, the higher generation like generation 1 to generation 2 then 2 to 3 and 4 now so this up to this generation this third generation is pretty good not showing any kind of um, uh, toxicity uh, second generation shows uh, some amount of nephrotoxicity that means they are going against the uh, uh, what we can say uh, our uh, uti problems and nephrotoxicity and 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 except for these things uh, they are responsible for kind of anaphylaxis and a kind of allergic reaction that that is common for any kind of cell wall synthesis inhibitors or beta lactams that they can be very much allergic right so allergy is a common problem or common side effects for beta lactam antibiotics uh, like penicillins and also like cephalosporins uh, they are a kind of uh, allergic so let me write allergy is a kind of side effect okay and not only simple form of allergy but sometimes they are, they can also cause sometimes they can also cause what we know as what we know as uh, anaphylaxis and uh, Anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis, which is a dangerous form of uh, this hypersensitivity reactions of human body, can also be uh, done uh, you, after this kind of treatment using cephalosporins. Okay, and except for that, uh, the second generation somewhat uh, provides some nephrotoxicity. So that's not major concern. Can cause nephrotoxicity. Okay. Uh, second generation slightly cause this slight nephrotoxicity not very much but slight nephrotoxicity okay so that's uh, the, about uh, cephalosporins and i hope that's helpful thank you